And now, your prayer intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. Hello and welcome to Your Prayer Intentions. We're very happy to spend the next half hour with you praying, with some interviews, with some announcements, a little bit of talking, all culminating in praying for your prayer intentions, which is what the show was all about, of course. Let's begin with a little bit of old business. Uh, WQPH is putting together a pilgrimage. This is from Catholic Footprints. The pilgrimage to St. Joseph's Shrine in Sterling, New Jersey. Sister Lucia's letter to Cardinal Capera, a, quote, a time will come when decisive battle between the kingdom of Christ and Satan will be over marriage and family. It's going to be July 17th. It's a one-day trip. The pickup's going to be at 5 a.m., and it's going to pick up and drop off location. is going to be at Mystic Valley Parkway parking lot, which is behind St. Joseph's Church in Medford, Massachusetts. If you want more info about this event, you can email cfootprints at comcast.net. At cfootprints at comcast.net. Uh, you can also go to their website at cfootprints, exactly the letter C, and then footprints.org. It's called Catholic Footprints. The chaplain for the event is going to be Father Jose Maria Babin. So it's definitely something you're going to want to check out. And again, that's July 17th, 2021. It's $90 a person. And it's going to be the pilgrimage to the St. Joseph Shrine in Sterling, New Jersey for the year of St. Joseph, which makes perfect sense to me. Uh, now, I must reg- I regret I'm not going to be able to go myself, but still worthwhile for you to get yourself down there. I do not have a drop-dead date on when you have to reserve your spot by. be a good idea to contact them soon. Again, the number is 508 508- Five two five sixty seven ninety seven. The email address is cfootprints at comcast dot net. That's cfootprints at comcast dot net. And we've been talking about that trip for a couple of weeks, so you're gonna want to get yourself signed up if you'd like to go. Especially again now with the max are dropping and so forth, take advantage of the chance to go to pilgrimage and the like. A little bit of more old business. Just a reminder: uh, we mentioned this last week that the mass obligation is back. So. Although, as I've said last week, most people who are listening to this show are probably ones who are going to Mass anyways. I tell you, my daily Masses at St. Bernard's have been pretty full. Uh, But the Mass obligation is back, so make sure you get yourself to Mass. And the third thing I mentioned last week, we're talking about the indulgence calendars. They are available on the main page of the WQPH website, and there's two versions for the month of June. There's a full calendar with all the uh, various names in today. I'm recording this on Wednesday, the 9th, so the name there is Grace Antochi, who we're praying for today uh, on, on Wednesday. But there's, of course, a new name for Saturday, and there's also, in addition to the main calendar, the full one, there's an empty calendar, a blank one. And the reason why we have the blank one up there is if you want to do something like this for your own parish, let's say uh, you want to introduce it in your parish, say get the list of the dead from your parish and create an indulgence calendar for your local parish. Great idea to do. We have a blank calendar you can download. And that way you can either fill it in or make modifications, make it into the July calendar if you want to get ahead of the game. I actually have to fill out the July calendar. I've got a fair amount of names ready. And if you have names you want included in the July calendar, please email them to us at wqph893 at comcast.net. That's wqph893 at comcast.net. Just put in the subject line indulgence calendar names. Put the list of the names and they'll get into the queue. There's You know, the people who go in ahead of you, who've already sent their names, they're going to be ahead of you. But just add them in, and we're very happy to add them to the indulgence calendar there. I do want to mention uh, one tiny error on the website. It says a plenary indulgence calendar, and most of the indulgences listed are partial. There are plenary indulgences available. And they are listed on the sheet. The back of the sheet, the front, the first page has the list of the indulgence calendar. The back page has the norm for indulgences. So there will be 
the list of plenary indulgences that are available. And again, one thing I should stress, this is not a complete list of prayers that carry indulgences. There are other prayers that have them, and if you're aware of them, you know, feel free to use any other prayers or let us know if we missed one and maybe we can fit them in. It took, <laughs> we won't... We want to keep the print big enough for people to read, so <laughs> you can't fit in everything. Uh, by the way, and to, if you're listening Saturday, if you don't have an indulgence calendar, uh, today's indulgence for Saturday, again, I'm, I'm praying for Grace Antochi, who is the Wednesday indulgence when I'm recording this. The Saturday indulgence is for Antonio Quateroni. Antonio Quateroni. So uh, if you're listening on Saturday and you want to earn the indulgence, that's who you'd be earning it for. And today, I'm declaring that the prayers for this show, the indulgences, is going to go to Grace Antochi. Grace Antochi. So, again, you go to the WQPH website, wqphradio.org. It'll be right on the right-hand side, the two calendars, so feel free to download them. And start putting these graces that you've probably already done the heavy lifting of getting, put them to work. It's like getting extra interest on your money. Now we're going to get to our prayers and our intentions. As I've said, if you have intentions, best way to do them is the prayer wall at wqphradio.org. So much great stuff at wqphradio.org. You really need to check it out. Our podcasts are there. Podcasts of the other shows, the donate button, which I will always push because that's what keeps us going over here that allows us to do the things we do. The indulgence calendar, which I already said. Uh, all sorts of wonderful things at the WQPH radio website. And the pr- nice thing about the prayer wall, as I've said in the past, is that not only do I get to see what, you know, if you have a prayer request, but uh, other people can pray for your intentions outside of the show. And you can see the feedback there, which is it's very nice. It's nice to know that people are praying for you. So from the uh, prayer wall, we have uh, prayers requested for... The Sumula family and their time of loss is a sad time for the Sumula family. Me that has had some losses. We have a prayer for a newly married couple that are doing all right. With father at uh, at uh, St. Bernard's has asked for prayers for not only the recent first communion class, but for the graduates both of the high school and of the grammar school. People have graduated and moved on. The standing prayer requests, of course, which have been there for a while. We, the standing prayer requests for Lucy, who we're very happy that she's listening. Uh, for Mary Lotz, for the intentions of the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia, for the local parishes, for the donors of WQPH, and thank you so much again for helping us out. Uh, and, of course, the standing request for conversions. And, <laughs> as I said, still the most... Popular prayer request, conversions, conversions, conversions. We also have a prayer request for someone who's dealing with cancer. And a prayer of thanksgiving for a person who has recovered from a serious operation and is now back to work. Always important to remember the the thank you requests. It's good to remember the uh, story of the ten lepers, the ten who were cured and the only one that came back. Let's always be the one that comes back and says thank you to God for all of these things that God provides, the daily bread that we are able to fund. Without the without God helping us with the daily bread, we would be very hot off indeed. Well, since we just talked about the daily bread, and since we talked about indulgences, which require communion for the day, we'll pray the uh, fifth mystery of the light, which is the Introduction of the Holy Eucharist. And we'll pray this as we pray everything in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fifth mystery of light is the institution of the Holy Eucharist. We offer the Lord Jesus' this tenth decade on the institution of the Holy Eucharist. And we ask of thee, through this mystery and through the intercession of thy Holy Mother, respect for the Holy Eucharist and to always receive it in a worthy fashion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now to the hour of death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My Jesus, forgive us our sins, and save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most in thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the institution of the Holy Eucharist come down to our souls. Amen. And for the intention of the Holy Father, and for the Pope Emeritus, Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we have part two of our interview with Donna Heckler. Her book is Living Like a Lady When You Have Cancer. And part one was rather inspirational, and I think you will find part two just as inspirational. Here is Donna Heckler talking about her book. In the book, when you're dealing with these little things, and the little things and the big things, when you look at the various things, again, you were talking about covering spots and so forth and the eyebrows and, and, and the various makeups, are these things that can be done inexpensively? Of course, you already have the big expense of cancer, so that's got to be a consideration too. So what I tried to do in the book was I start with the fact that you may lose your hair and then all the elements of losing your hair. I end the book with a chapter that your hair will grow back and all the things then that happen in between fill up the book. So the tips and tricks as much as possible are simple, they're practical, they're easy. Um, one simple one, for instance, when I was diagnosed, uh, the oncologist said right away, whatever you do, don't go to the dentist. Well, why not? Well, the dentist often, when they do work on your teeth, it's a source of infection and we cannot afford to let a patient have an infection when they're on chemo. So this is standard advice. Don't go to the dentist. When I finished all my treatments, my dentist said, oh, I wish you had called me. I now have to repair four crowns. If you had called me, no, you couldn't come when you're going through chemo. But if you had called me, I could have given you a prescription toothpaste that would have saved you from all the issues you're having because of the chemo. So it's things like that. Make the phone call. Another one of my favorite tips is when you go through chemo especially, things taste very metallic. And they taste metallic because most of your chemos have a platinum or metal base. So that's going through your system and it's causing things to taste metallic. And so what do people do? They bring you food and then they bring you silverware. If you do nothing more than eat off of plastic, it mitigates the metallic taste. It doesn't taste as bad. And for a cancer patient, you want them to eat as much as possible so that they can restore their health. So little things, which are not expensive, can make such a difference. But you got to know about them. You have to know about them. I never knew about the metallic taste or the idea of eating off plastic. See, this is the type of thing. I, I love this doing these interviews, and I love talking to people in general, but I love learning about these little things, and I'm sure our listeners on WQPH today are, are listening to that and saying, wow, I never thought of that. So, okay, you, you're you now in the middle of things. Now, at what point 
did you realize that you were going to beat this cancer? That's a good question. When did I realize that? I, you know, there's a part of me that thinks that I realized that the day the doctor looked at me and said, you take your job, you live your life, I'll take care of the cancer. Because what I realized was I was putting my trust into her um, and her experience and her ability to treat it. And I say that, and at the same time, I was still terrified. I mean, terrified, not terrified. I don't, I don't know how to answer that because you'd have days that you're like, oh my gosh, this is happening. And then you have days that you're calm, right? Um... I think I probably knew that it was over and done um, when I was going through radiation. When I was going through radiation. Now, we haven't talked at all about your life before cancer. So, tell us a little bit about your life before cancer, especially your faith life. Because, again, I can't help but notice your faith was developed and ready. Your faith was where it needed to be when the cancer came. Now, was that something that had been consistent through your life? Was that something that you would have had to develop? Where did you, how and in what style did you develop your faith to the point that when that doctor called you in, you were ready, you had God by your side? Yeah, that's a fabulous question. So I'm a cradle Catholic. I was born to Catholic parents. I'm, um, I remember my grandmother and my father's side attending daily mass. So we, we grew up with a very strong traditional Catholic background. I went to all Catholic grade school, high school. Um, so very Catholic all through our lives growing up. And then when I became independent and went to college and whatever, I was still Catholic. Of course I was, and I would go to mass, but I wasn't practicing my faith nearly as much as probably we did in high school. But then as times progressed, um, I really found my faith deepening as I was turning to God more and more. And I would see, I called them boulders early on. I would see things happen in my work life and then all of a sudden something else popped up and I was like, well, I don't know how that happened. That must have been from God. And I started to realize that in fact, he had been there every step of the way. I just wasn't always noticing it. My secular life was very much about corporate. So um, I was running marketing for major companies and I was running around the world doing global travel, leading the marketing for these teams. So um, I, I was always out and about and crazy busy, but I was always trying to find time to bring God into my life. Before the cancer, I did have um, a very freak accident and shattered my leg. And they weren't sure if I'd walk, actually, after that. And I would say that my faith really deepened at that point when that occurred. Because all of a sudden, I realized I'm sitting here quietly. I can't work. I'm in a wheelchair. And I'm seeing God every single moment of the day. So all these boulders he'd been moving around before for me, he was really moving around now. And he was there in shining glory. So then by the time the cancer hit, God and I were on a journey. We were just doing this together. I recall you told me a little bit ago about a funny story concerning your family and your leg when it was bro when it was broken. I, I cannot let you get away from uh, here without telling that story, which I thought was such a cute coping idea that I'm sure that there's more than one listener here who's either had a broken bone or is in the process of dealing with one. I got to have you tell that story. Of course, I'm happy to. So I have young nieces at the time, and they were always wanting to do things with Aunt Donna, and I couldn't walk. I'm in a wheelchair, but I didn't want them to think that Aunt Donna couldn't do it. I wanted them to think that it was just my leg getting in my way. So I called my leg floppy. And so I would say, well, Aunt Donna would love to go to the beach with you, but floppy can't handle the beach. So floppy probably shouldn't go, but Aunt Donna would love to. So I started naming body parts um, because the body part wasn't defining me. I didn't want it to define me. Um, I'm defined differently. And I think some people laugh at me that I had names for body parts, but I think it actually worked because the little girls, especially at the time, would come up and they'd pat floppy and they'd say, how is floppy? Can floppy go for a walk now? Yeah, you know what? Let's go for a walk with Floppy. Well, that's a very cute thing. And that, and those coping mechanisms, are those things that helped you when the cancer came? So you had that those coping mechanisms. You had a bit of humor. When the cancer came, did you use these coping mechanisms? And how did they apply 
when your family, because I imagine your family, it's one thing for your niece to worry about whether or not Floppy wants to go walking, but it's another thing to hear that Aunt Donna has cancer. Absolutely. So, of course, it was breast cancer, and we had to give that body part a name. So we had Lumpy. Um, and, and Lumpy allowed me to have conversations with people about cancer without having them get all upset about it. Um, in fact, when I was first diagnosed, the first day, my nephew, who, who now is a focused missionary, was with me. And nobody was talking about the cancer um, none of the family that was at dinner with us, my nephew wasn't. And finally, he looked at all of us and he said, if nobody will say that Aunt Donna has cancer, can we at least say that she has an illness in her breast? And we all just laughed, but it told us that we had to find a way to talk about these things. And I needed, I felt, I needed to give them words that they could use that it would allow the conversations to happen um, because nobody wants to talk about it. It's scary. And especially if you're not going through it, you're loving somebody, you're a caregiver for somebody who's going through this. How do you address this? So that was what we used to talk about what was happening. That became lumpy. You seem to have really figured this out well and coped with this well. And now you're at the Catholic Marketing Network event. You have people lined up to get signed copies of your book. The reception for this book, have you been surprised by how it's been received? Well, I will say I have been thrilled by how it's been received by the Catholic community. Um, in the secular community, people don't always like the word lady. Um, but I think it speaks to how we want to be the best version of ourselves, how we want to let God shine through. And I have just loved the reception here. People are loving this book, and they're recognizing cancer touches so many people. It touches, what, one in eight women may be diagnosed with breast cancer. That's a stunning statistic. And so we all know people who've been through it. We all know even family members who've dealt with it, or we ourselves have dealt with it. And so to have a resource... Um, that also has that faith component to it and the role of faith as you go through something like this I think is part of of why the book is touching some hearts here one more time the title of the book is the title of the book is living like a lady when you have cancer and where can people find it Donna if they want it we can find this book certainly online you can find it at my website which is Donna a heckler com. Donna a heckler so two ways you can find it of course online at Amazon Barnes and Noble but you know where you can find it Catholic bookstores there's a lot of Catholic bookstores picking this book up Donna heckler thank you so much for your time and your insights and I gotta say I've done a lot of interviews, as, as I've mentioned, and this interview has been a lot of pleasure because as I look at you and as I talk to you, I can see the spirit it's as if the spirit is still beside you as you do these things. and it's, It makes it joyful to, to see that sort of thing. Well, thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate that. Thank you. And that was Donna Heckler, and we have just enough time for our closing prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Holy Spirit upon this station, upon the stations that are carrying this show, and upon the listeners of this show to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your Son, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. We make our prayer through Jesus our Lord, and we pray it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I only have a few seconds. Think about this. When you go forth in the world today, think of Donna Heckler and her book, and think of her in an hour of trouble with cancer, writing so others can do better. Let's see if we can do the same. Goodbye and God bless all. This is Peter and Jemmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at comcast.net let me repeat that it's wqph893 at comcast.net
and we will pray for you. If you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer, tweet me directly at the Tech Guy blog on Twitter or the Tech Guy blog on Gab. God bless you.